Was the B-21 Raider designed to carry air-to-air -air missiles? That's the biggest question I have after spending the past few days poring over the footage and photographs of the B-21 Raider's first test flight this past Friday. Now, there are lots of tantalizing details that we can glean from close-up photographs of this aircraft taken by photographers like Andrew Kanai, but if you ask me, most of these details are things that we would expect to see on a first test flight. But if you ask me, the most interesting detail here is the fact that we may be seeing three separate payload bays. Now, the first primary weapons bay is right where you'd expect it to be, smack in the center of the aircraft, and you can find it by looking for the seams for its two large payload bay doors. But off to either side, you can see two more panels that could certainly be panels that you open to access internal components for maintenance and repair, but could just as feasibly be secondary munition stores. Now these payload bay doors, if that is what they are, are quite a bit smaller than that primary bay, but would still be plenty big enough to accommodate a wide variety of air to ground or maybe even air-to-air -air munitions. And it's worth noting that about a year ago, the Congressional Research Service released a report on the next generation air dominance fighter the Air Force is developing to replace the F-22. And in that report, they said this new sixth generation fighter may have more in common with the B-21 than it does with the F-22 Raptor. And at the time, we all interpreted that to mean that, well, this new 6th gen fighter probably won't be as maneuverable as the F-22. But they may really have been hinting at the fact that the lines are getting blurrier than ever as to what differentiates a fighter from a bomber in these new generation aircraft. And if the B-21 is capable of leveraging air-to-air -air missiles for its own self-defense, that would make it more of a fighter than the F-117 Nighthawk ever was. Now, to be clear, if these are secondary payload bays, they could be used for other kinds of self-defense systems, like deploying towed decoys, or even flying decoys like the ADM-160 Mauled J, which is a miniature air-launched decoy and jammer that can replicate the radar return of any aircraft that you want, distracting enemy air defense systems so that they don't notice your stealth aircraft sneaking through. These payload bays could also be used for self-defense air-to-ground munitions like the AARGMER or Advanced Anti-Radiation Missile Extended Range. Now, this is a radar hunting weapon that's commonly used for the suppression or destruction of enemy air defenses. In other words, when enemy radar arrays come online, these missiles are designed to hone in on that radar signal and destroy the array, eliminating enemy air defenses in the region. And there could certainly be value in the B-21 carrying these sorts of weapons with it into the fight rather than relying on fighters in the Wild Weasel mission to carry out those missions for it. And to that end, the Air Force's new stand-in attack weapon in development is sort of an all-purpose air-to-ground missile designed to engage any kind of target, including ones broadcasting radar waves. And it would make a great deal of sense for a B-21 to fly into contested airspace with missiles on board that can take out SAM sites. But let's talk about the possibility that these payload bays could also carry air-to-air -air missiles, starting with the fact that the B-21 is designed to be modular. Now, modularity is basically just the ability to quickly and easily swap out components of the aircraft. And that means these payload bays could likely support a wide variety of weapons, some that may not have even been fielded yet just by swapping out mounting brackets inside those payload bays. Of course, you have to worry about connectivity to the aircraft's onboard avionics, but that's where open design software architecture comes into play as well. Now, we don't know if the B-21 is meant to fly with an onboard radar, but we do know that its predecessor, the B-2 Spirit, flies with two. These ANAPQ-181 phased radar arrays are low probability of intercept, or LPI arrays, designed to aid in air-to-ground targeting. And that low probability of intercept part is meant to denote their ability to skip frequencies and do other things to limit the enemy's ability to detect those broadcasting radar wavelengths. Now, if the B-21 is going to carry an onboard radar, it would likely be a far more modern and advanced active electronically scanned 
and array. In fact, it might even leverage gallium nitride transmitters, which would make it extremely powerful. Now, Northrop Grumman, as luck would have it, designs and builds the AN-APG-81 radar in the F-35, as well as the even more capable AN-APG-88 set to enter service in the years to come, which means the B-21 may well be carrying a radar that is just as advanced and capable as the F-35s will be four plus years from now. And if that is the case, it would certainly be capable of finding targets in the sky as well as on the ground. Now, if the B-21 does come packing air-to-air -air missiles, those secondary payload bay doors are plenty big enough to support the AIM-9X Sidewinder, which is an infrared-guided short-range air-to-air missile, or the AIM-120 AMRAAM, or Advanced Medium Range Air-to-Air -air Missile, which is a radar-guided weapon with a range known to be in excess of 100 miles. But it's important to remember that the U.S. has a number of new air-to-air -air missiles in development, including Raytheon's Peregrine air-to-air -air missile, said to be just as capable as the AIM-9X in a package about half the size, as well as the AIM-260, which is rumored to be the longest-ranged air-to-air -air missile ever devised that's headed for service as we speak. Now, to be clear, I can't say with any certainty what these panels are at all, but in this modern era of blurred lines between fighters, attack aircraft, and maybe even bombers, it seems perfectly feasible to me that systems designed for stealth fighters, like the F-35, could find their way into the fuselage of a stealth bomber like the B-21. And if we can make that logical leap, it isn't that much more to say that the B-21 could likely leverage a variety of air-to-air -air missiles alongside a bevy of air-to-ground munitions. It would, after all, make the B-21 even more survivable in enemy airspace while complicating matters even more for the military planners and adversary nations. The real truth is, the technological capabilities of the B-21 Raider are still in active development and likely will be even after the bomber enters service, which is currently slated for 2027. But as we watch programs like the B-21 or NGAD or the Navy's FAXX program mature, it's worth remembering not to get too hung up on designations like fighter or bomber. Because at the end of the day, the intent behind these new designs is not to adhere to rules established by past platforms. It's to change the way wars are fought, and importantly, the way they're won.